It's been a while since I've seen you, Lily. I got the Christmas gift that you sent me. It has been a while, Mom. How have you been doing? Ah, so the present I sent you finally arrived. I was wondering when you would get it. I'm glad we were able to see each other this year. Same here. I hope next year we can see each other more. You're really all over the place. It seems like every time we meet, you are just a complete mess and don't know what to do with yourself. I am so sorry. I truly am. Work is always so busy at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Your mother-in-law comes second. I'm not nearly as important to you as other things in your life. That's why it's no surprise to me that you put work above everything else yet again. You really need to get your priorities straight. This has got me wondering if you are actually being a mother to your kid. She's still in elementary school, you know. Kids at that age really need their mother around. I can't say for sure how well I'm doing, but I know that I'm trying to do my best. And that's what counts, right? You can't say for sure. Are you planning on to rely on my son to do that for you too? It's like everything else. You really are hopeless, you know that? You see, just a little bit more money in the bank and it goes straight to your head. It's like that's the only thing on your tiny brain. Anyway, you won't hear any complaints from me if you send me an expensive gift for Christmas. But I will say that you wasted your money sending me such high quality steaks because I thought it was actually a horrible present. It's so obvious you don't have a single sincere bone in your body. You just do everything because you have to. Doesn't everyone like steaks? So I thought getting some would make you happy. And I made sure it was the best beef I could find. But you don't like it? I ate what you sent me. I wasn't going to let any of that go to waste. But next time, I want you to give me something that I really want. Something that will last. Something you really want? Like what, for example? Hmm. If I had to name something off the top of my head, what about a massage chair? You sacrifice your family for work, so you should be able to afford one. Right, Lily? I'm sure that I'm not asking for too much. I don't sacrifice my family. And a massage chair is a Christmas present? I think that's a little bit too much to ask for. I didn't even get anyone in my own family something that expensive. It's just an example. Come on, Lily. Get that stick out of your butt. You should learn to not take everything so seriously. People like you who have no sense of humor are such a bore. You don't always have to be so uptight about everything, you know? I'm sorry. Uh, so what are you doing for New Year's? Are you planning to come to my house? I've been meaning to ask you about that. Is it okay if I come over? It's fine by me, I guess. I just wonder if there will be any room for you. You know that my daughter and her family are coming over. And then there will also be my son and that daughter of yours here too. It's going to get mighty cramped. Oh, well in that case, I don't want to be a burden. I'll skip out on this time. But maybe next year we'll work it out better. It seems like this would be more convenient and save you some trouble anyway. Really? Are you sure you don't mind? I'm sorry for making you be all alone this new year, but that's okay, right? You might have felt a little out of place celebrating with us anyway. And look at it this way, you can finally take a load off and relax at home. Lord knows you need it. You always look so run down from work. Yeah, maybe Mark and my Jeremy will go to your place and wish you a happy new year for me. That would be nice. I'm going to make sure that this gets together better than ever. It's been so long since just the family has been together. There's always been some extra people around. <laughs> it's fine by me if you don't come, but can you make sure that Mark brings over something good? It's the least you can do for me, since I have to deal with your daughter coming over to my place. I'll make sure to do that. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get your favorite desserts and have him bring them to you. You'll absolutely love them, I promise. Just remember, the Lolata shops are closed early at the end of the year. And a lot of places are closed on New Year's Day. So you need to make sure you get my favorite desserts ahead of time. Or else, you might not be able to get exactly what I want.
Happy New Year, Mom. I hope you had a good one. Hey, today is January 2nd. It's not New Year's anymore. But Happy New Year's, I guess. Even though you're a day late. I'm not late. Everybody knows that you can wish someone Happy New Year's up to three days later. Tell me something. Aren't you my daughter-in-law, Lily? Shouldn't you wish me a Happy New Year's on New Year's Day? Or am I just an afterthought? You know what? It's fine. Actually, I don't expect you to understand common sense. You're always so dense and everyone needs to explain the most basic things to you. I'm sure that's what the problem is. So what is it? What do you want? This better be important. It's about my daughter's Christmas present. Why was my daughter the only one not to get one? I heard that you waited to give out everyone's Christmas presents at New Year's Eve. Everyone got one except Jenny. Don't tell me you and Mark are still mad about that. <laughs> Christmas gifts are not mandatory. I don't have to give one to anyone. Then tell me, why should I have to give a Christmas gift to someone you birthed? Is it that you had your eyes on Jenny's gift and were hoping to snatch up whatever I gave her to you? What would I do with a Christmas present for a child? That's not what it's about. Mark and I just don't like being treated differently. You gave his sister's children's presents, right? And you did it right in front of my daughter without making any attempt to hide it. She must have been expecting to get one too. Do you have any idea how that can hurt a little kid? And the effect it can have on them? That didn't cross my mind. I just bought my daughter's children's gifts because I wanted to and forgot to get one for your daughter. Besides, it's bad to just expect things. Your daughter should learn this lesson. Still, you really crossed a line this time, and I don't think you understand how hurtful your actions were to Jenny. If you're only going to give gifts to other people, then do it in private away from her. Or, you could have given it to Katie so that she could have given it to them. Listen here. Why should I have to give a gift to someone you birthed? And now you're telling me you're shocked I didn't give her one? Like it was something I had to do? It really is disgusting to hear how you talk about me. You expect me to get her a gift and then get angry when I don't? Get yourself some class. You behave that way to my daughter just because she's mine. Duh, dum-dum. Look at you now, finally starting to get a clue. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Ever think it's because you never listen to me when I tell you to do things like quit your job, maybe? And, on top of that, you are never willing to make any type of compromise. You really bring out the worst in me, I swear. I know you don't like me. You've made that more than clear. But please, don't take it out on my daughter. She did nothing to you. Not to mention, she's Mark's daughter, too. Can you try not to think about me when you look at her? Even if she's my son's kid, she still has half of your dirty blood running through her veins. And when I look at her, I see more of you in her than I do of him. There's no way I'll ever like her. On top of that, my other grandchildren are so much cuter than your daughter because they look like my daughter. If my other grandchildren are going to be anything like your daughter, then I don't want any more. Is that so? So you're still going to treat my daughter and Katie's children differently? Tell me, what's wrong about that? Who I like and don't like is up to me. I'm allowed to make my own decisions, you know? Yeah, you're right. All right. I have nothing else to say about this matter. Well, I'm surprised you finally get it. You and your daughter are so annoying. You two must really love to drive me up the wall with your antics. You know, when your daughter found out she wasn't getting a Christmas present, she kept whining to my son over and over about how there wasn't anything for her. She made such a big fuss over it. Seriously, is she still a baby? She definitely gets her lack of brains from you. She just can't read the room. I guess you're right. Oh no, did I offend you? It seems like you're angry with me now. Hopefully, your daughter doesn't have any more bad influences around here. You're really raising a monster. Is my son running late for another date with you? 
Yeah? I was just chatting with him, and he mentioned it to me as if it's no big deal. I'm sorry, but I feel like I must have raised a selfish boy. I swear, I did my best. Now I know it's not really my place to say, but lately, I've been wondering if you'd truly be happy with him. The way he's treating you is just not right. I mean, I know he's not the most sensitive person in the world, but I expected him to at least show more respect to his fiancée. I hope it's not causing you any unnecessary stress or anything like that. To tell you the truth, even I've been wondering if agreeing to marry him was a good idea or not. I'm sure you're not sure about it. Why did you say yes? Why him? I hear the way he treats you. I said yes to Johnny because I owe him. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of a long story. Back in high school, I wasn't exactly Miss Popular. The popular girls made it their mission to bully me. And things got really rough. One evening, I was minding my own business, heading to a bookstore alone, when a bunch of senior guys, the really mean ones, spotted me and surrounded me. I'm pretty sure they were high or drunk or something. They started demanding money from me just to let me pass. And if I didn't cuff up the cash, they threatened to take it from me in some other way. These guys were seriously messed up. Like getting suspended for drugs and assaulting teachers kind of messed up. And me? Well, I was just a girl. I couldn't even defend myself against the mean girls at school who bullied me. Let alone these guys. That night, they could have done anything to me. I tried fighting back to escape, but it only made them angrier. And they started hitting me. Oh my god. Johnny happened to be on his way home from a basketball game that night and witnessed the whole thing. He had his baseball bat with him and approached them from behind. Everything went down in a blur. I don't think any of those guys had any clue about what hit them or who was responsible. Johnny came to my rescue that night. I really think those guys were planning on taking more than just my money that night. I had no idea that happened. Johnny never told me. Like I said, those guys had no idea what hit them. Rumors spread around school that they got seriously messed up, but nobody knew the full story. Little did anyone know that Johnny was the one behind it all. It's like everyone thought I had some secret ninja skills or something because nobody dared to mess with me at school after that incident. Johnny didn't just save me that night. He completely transformed my school life. No more teasing or bullying. If Johnny hadn't been there, things could have turned out way worse. I owe Johnny big time. Maybe even my life. I see. Johnny was a pretty wild kid himself. It doesn't surprise me that he jumped into a fight. Coming up behind some guys when he had a bat. Well, if he did it to save someone, I can't really complain. Back in the day, I didn't even know Johnny. He's a few years older than me and didn't go to my high school. After that crazy night, I was too shaken up to say much to him. And we never crossed paths again. Well, not until years later, after I finished college. One of my buddies dragged me to a club, and there he was, Johnny. I recognized him right away. He was the guy who saved me back in high school. Funny thing is, he didn't remember me. I guess I've changed a lot since the last time he saw me. But you know what? When he came to my rescue that night years ago, and now seeing him again, I couldn't help but think it was fate. That's why I wanted to be with him. I had no idea about any of this. And I had no idea you felt that way about my son. But lately, I've been having doubts about being with Johnny. There are times when I feel like he's using me or not reciprocating my feelings. Whenever he does something that ticks me off, if I dare speak up, he throws that night in my face. It's like he expects me to forgive every single thing he does just because of what he did for me that one time. I'm really sorry, Emily. I had no idea that my son helped you like that back then, and I had no clue he was using it against you all this time in your relationship. You see, I had a tough life, and I didn't want my son to experience the same hardships. So I've been lenient with him and given him everything he wanted. 
I never realized it would turn him into someone who uses a single good deed as an excuse to get away with all the bad things he does to others. Yeah. He doesn't seem to care about your feelings at all. He's using what he did years ago as an excuse to treat you like garbage and get away with it. He only cares about himself. God, he's just like I was when I was his age. I should have seen this earlier. I guess I was hoping he'd change like I did. You used to be like that? What made you change? I messed up really bad at work, but the owner of one of my clients' firms helped me. What do you mean you messed up? I did something really stupid, and nobody was ready to cover for me. I thought my life was done for. But you won't believe what went down. The client I tried to pull a fast one on, the boss of his company, reached out to me. He said he'd forget the whole mess if I promised to never pull a stunt like that again. All he wanted was for me to stick to the right path from then on. So I made a deal. That's all it took? Isn't it weird how things work out? I could have easily lied to that guy, saying I'd change without actually doing a thing. Most folks would laugh it off feeling lucky they dodge a bullet and continue being their old selves. But something shifted in me. I couldn't figure out why he helped me without gaining anything in return. See, I used to think successful business people had to be ruthless, no exceptions. But this dude showed me that you can be kind and still make it big. So I decided to give it a shot. I started building more business connections, making friends along the way. Before long, I had my own company up and running, and it's doing well. It may not be as massive as his, but it's big enough that I can provide Johnny with everything he desires, and money isn't an issue for me. So that's how you got your company off the ground? It was the experience that changed me. I was kind of hoping that it would be Johnny's marriage that changed him. Maybe when he gets to meet your family and realizes how nice they are. I don't know. I just hope he starts being nicer to you. You deserve it, and he shouldn't be treating you like this. I'll tell you what. Give Johnny another chance, see how it goes when he meets your family. And I'll give him one more chance to change too. It pains me to see how insensitive he's being to you. If he messes up again, I don't think I'll be able to forgive him. And don't think for a second that you have to either, okay? Okay. Maybe when he meets my family and sees where I come from, something will click in him. I'll give him another chance to turn things around. I still believe it was fate that brought us together. Thanks, Mr. Brandon. I'll let you know how it goes. Hey, Lily. What's the matter? You built your parents a two-family house. Yes, I did. But I'm much older than they are. I will need to be cared for much sooner than they will. Shouldn't it be me who is living together with you too? Isn't that what a proper son and daughter-in-law would do? What are you buying your parents a two-family house for? Who's going to look after me? Ah, you aren't getting it. We're only going to look after my parents, huh? What? Are you forgetting how old I am? I'm really going to need help getting around soon. No, I didn't forget. Mark agreed to let them live with us. In fact, he insisted. I'm their only daughter. I'm the only one who can look after them. It doesn't matter if you're the only daughter. Didn't you marry into our family? That makes you my daughter too. Why are you going to push me aside and just look after your parents? Am I a second place yet again? You got it all mixed up. I should be the one you're looking after, not your own parents. You've never considered me a member of the family until you conveniently decided I need to take care of you in the near future. On top of that, you won't show my daughter any affection. You said you'll never like her because she's mine. What makes you think that I would build a house for someone like that? The fact is, you're part of my family now, and the right thing to do is to look after me. So what? Mark City doesn't think of you as a mother or a family. 
And I have to say that I feel the same way too. I always tried to be kind to you and stay true to myself in hopes that you would accept me one day for who I am. But I understand now that it was all a complete waste of time. If I don't accept you, it's because you didn't try hard enough. You just need to put in some more effort. Don't try to put this on me, okay? I'm not the one to blame here. It's okay if you don't like me, but what is not okay is how you treat my daughter. You love to hate on her. What parent would be okay with that? You love to constantly compare Jenny with your other grandchildren. And even if you felt that way, you should be an adult and keep it to yourself. You shouldn't go running around making a show of it. You really are an ungrateful, disrespectful little brat. You need to watch how you talk to me. I'm your mother-in-law. Say whatever you want. I'm completely over getting hurt by what you say to me and how you treat me. I'm not going to listen to someone who hates me. You can't hurt me anymore. Besides, the feeling is mutual. I don't think highly of you either. Well, look at you. Now you're going to mock me and try to make me look like a fool. Fine, have it your way. I'm done getting involved with your family. It's time to just cut ties. Besides, I still have my daughter's family anyway. All right, totally fine by me. You can rest assured that we won't be coming around anymore. Things really started to go downhill when my son married you. Your daughter is going to grow up not knowing what love feels like because the two of you are so busy with work. And that's when you'll wish that you've listened to me more. You're really going to regret it. Mark my words. Ah, I'm going to make sure that I have nothing to do with you from now on. Hello, Lily. Could I talk to you about something? Didn't you say you won't contact me anymore? I just want to have a small chat. I think just a little bit is okay. I'm just really worried about my son. What are you worried about? I'm worried about the fact that you two are living together with your parents. Are you trying to make me feel ashamed or embarrassed? What am I supposed to tell other people? We may technically live together, but we have two separate living spaces. The only shared space is the kitchen. Otherwise, it's like two separate houses. Plus, we make sure to respect each other's privacy and not get in each other's way. Our life really hasn't changed that much. Is that so? By the way, do you remember what today is? Huh? Why do you ask? Because today is my birthday. Ah, come to think of it, that's right. That's it? That's all you have to say to me? Yes, that's all. You didn't send me anything. That's right, I didn't. And now, all you're going to say is, that's right? I deserve a little more respect than that. You used to send me a present every year. So, why not this year? What's so different this year? Are you seriously asking me that? Mom, do you have dementia or something? How do you not remember? What? How dare you say that? I'm totally fine. My daughter said I'm in perfect health, actually. Why are you being so rude? Well, I've gotten into you. You never used to act like this. Well, have you completely forgotten what went on last month? Don't you remember you told me that you were going to do your best to stay away from us? After all of that, why should I still have to send you a present? Because I'm your mother-in-law. It's what a good daughter-in-law would do. Do I have to teach you everything? But you said you were done with us and that you were going to keep your distance. How do you not understand any of this? Is it because you don't understand English? Oh, come on. We both know that's not it. You're just trying to be rude now. You guys need to respect me. 
no matter how many times I say, I'm going to cut you out of my life. I'm your mother, after all. You have to forgive me. Weren't you talking to be kind of your elders in school? I'm not sure I believe in respecting someone just because of their age. If you want to be treated kindly, you need to become someone that I can respect. Now, if you'll excuse me, please don't contact me again. Hold up. What did you guys do? My daughter didn't even come over to visit me. You had to have done something. We used to always celebrate my birthday together. There must be something bothering her and her husband. You should talk to her. And what could that possibly be? When I talked to her, she told me that you keep pestering her to live together. It's because I hold a special place in her heart, you know? She really loves me. She has always put me first, no matter what. I am number one in her life. So wouldn't it be normal for us to live together? It's what a good daughter would do. And someone who loves their mother that much would naturally want to live with her. It doesn't seem like your daughter and her husband want that. Huh? What are you saying? When you treated Jenny and I horribly over Christmas, they reached out afterward to apologize about how you behaved. Why should she have to be the one to reach out about that? You were completely in the wrong, and yet she was kind enough to address what happened. What? Why did she apologize for that? Any person that had a sense of right and wrong would apologize when their parents stepped out of line and did something hurtful. She told me she tried talking to you about it so many times. She noticed how you started treating me right after Mark and I got married. But she gave up, since it seemed hopeless and you were never willing to acknowledge it. But she always made sure to apologize to me for whatever you did. I always thought it was a bit unfair for you to make her do that, honestly. I was only doing what I thought was best for you. Are you sure? To tell you the truth, it didn't seem that way. I think you did it because you wanted to hurt my feelings, not because you thought it was good for me. You never liked me and always looked for ways to get under my skin. And now you've made the whole family give up on you. What did you give up? We gave up on being a family. I told you that I'm going to distance myself. This means we're not family anymore. You completely destroyed that for us. Katie and her husband must have gotten so drained from you trying to force them to live with you. Even they need a break and are trying to put up some boundaries between you and them. Who will look after me if my daughter and her husband don't live with me? I don't know. That's not my problem at all. But I can tell you that it won't be Mark and I. And don't expect us to change our minds on this matter. And why is that? I don't understand what exactly I did to deserve this. I'm all alone now that my husband is gone. But if something happens to me and there's no one there to help me, I could die, you know? And it could all be prevented if someone just lives with me. I've sacrificed everything for Mark and Katie to make sure they were raised right and grew up to be who they are today. And now they want to act like this? What is this? You guys need to appreciate me more. I don't think anyone knows exactly how much I gave up for my children. Frankly, you aren't someone we can appreciate and living with you would be extremely difficult. I don't think it would be fair to us since you never seem to want to change your ways. You've always been mean and abusive to me. I can't think of the last time you said anything nice to me. You treat me like I'm invisible ignoring me at the dinner table. But I honestly don't care about all that. It's in the past, and I've learned to let it go. And all of this is because I'm the one who didn't quit my job when you told me to. Right? That's the excuse you were going to use for treating me the way you've been treating me. Right? Yes. Is it not your fault for not listening to what I said? 
Do you not always brush my words off? How am I the one to blame here? That's not my daughter's fault, right? So why are you talking about how you feel about me or my daughter? My daughter did absolutely nothing to you. And you still hurt that poor little girl's feelings. She's in elementary school, you know? I think being around you is detrimental for my daughter. If this is how you're going to act, you're just going to keep on hurting her, like you do to me. It's not healthy for her to yearn for the love of someone who will never give it. That's why I decided that I don't think it would be good for you to stay in our lives. Okay, okay, you've made your point. I'll admit that I was wrong for not giving her a Christmas present. After I thought about it some, I can say that I was a little bit out of line. I see what you're saying. It's too late for apologies. Lily, I thought stopping you from both working was for the best. Your kid is still in elementary school, and if you and Mark are both busy working, she might not get enough attention and feel neglected by her parents. There's no way you can keep up with all that while we're working as much as you do. For example, isn't it your job to take care of me? Yet, yeah, you don't want to do that. And it's obvious that you can't handle it all because of stuff like this. You still don't understand where I'm coming from. And you're in no position to give me orders anymore. Because we're not family anymore. You are not my mother. You never saw me as a member of the family anyway. That's not true. I saw you as my daughter-in-law, more or less. I mean, I really had no choice. My son did marry you. A daughter-in-law is not a servant at your every beck and call. I am my own person. I've always listened to what you said, except about work, because you are my husband's mother. Even when it meant doing things I didn't want to or didn't agree with. Besides, Mark doesn't view you as his mother anymore. So why should I? I don't want to have a relationship with you. It's time we went our separate ways. Once and for all. Lily, come on. Just listen to yourself. You're being a drama queen now. I said that I'm sorry for everything I did in the past. What more do you want? Maybe I was a bit resentful towards you because I felt like you took my son away from me. That might be what caused me to lash out at you. Now, can you please ask my son and daughter to come over here, even if just once, for me? I shouldn't have to spend my birthday all alone. I really do regret the horrible things I've done. Give me a chance to show you that. I will change. Listen to me. It's too late. It's too late to do anything. What's done is done. An apology won't fix the damage that you've done to my family. I've been apologizing like crazy to you and you still won't do anything? Are you being serious? Won't you think it over a bit? I don't really think you understand what you're saying. Do you really want to leave my weak old self all alone at this age? Are you not scared or worried about me at all? No one else did this to you. You brought this on yourself. You're the one who should regret it. And you finally can't look to anyone else to blame. I have to say that I'm pretty happy now. I've been living my best life. I'm trying my best to keep you out of my life. I don't want you to ruin what I have going. To this day, my mother-in-law has been living all alone in her old age. I heard that she doesn't have anyone come to visit her. It seems like her behavior has really driven everyone out of her life. I also heard that she's been having quite a hard time after Katie cut her out of her life. With her gone, she feels like she has no one to turn to anymore. Katie has been worried about her elderly mother living alone. Her mother did raise her after all. She said that her mother calls her every day, asking to live with her, and has been applying for two family homes, even though no one asked her to do that, and they keep telling her no. 
My mother-in-law's outburst really rubbed her and her husband the wrong way. She later laughed about it, how strained their relationship got after the incident. But things settled down now after they cut my mother-in-law out of their life. I think that showed them how much chaos she brought into their lives. And I don't think that they will be going back to how things once were. My husband and I talked it over and decided it's not healthy to have a relationship with someone like my mother-in-law. She only thinks of herself and constantly puts others down to feel superior. She will never admit when she's wrong or even try to change her ways, no matter how much people complain to her. Needless to say, we probably won't be seeing my mother-in-law again. To tell you the truth, we aren't even planning to attend her funeral. I know it's a bit drastic, but that's how serious we are about never having her back in our lives. As for my daughter, she has been smothered with affection thanks to living together with my parents. I think it's had a really positive effect on her. She seems to be living a happy, carefree life. She doesn't have to worry about being compared to other people and his love for who she truly is. Our home environment has really worked out for the better. I'm so happy to be surrounded by a family I love and no longer have to deal with needless drama or put up with the verbal abuse that my mother-in-law used to hurl my way. My sweet daughter is always kind to me and constantly wants me to show her affection. Even though my mother-in-law's actions deprive me of having a connection with her, and her actions caused me to have some emotional scars. I ended up learning a difficult lesson from it all. I learned how important it is to keep your environment full of positive influences. From now on, I'm going to make sure to keep those I truly love around me and make sure they know how appreciative I am. After that, Johnny's father not only disowned Johnny and wrote him out of his will, but he also fired him from the company. Now, with no job, no fiance, and no father to sponge off of, Johnny was left completely on his own. He didn't have any luck looking for a new job either, as all potential employers found it odd that he was fired from his own father's company and that he didn't have any good references. Johnny tried to go back to his father and apologize, but his father was firm with his decision and sent Johnny away every time. Mr. Brandon told Johnny that he would only take him back if he could prove to him that he had changed. But Johnny doesn't think that he did anything wrong and thus will likely never change. Things never would have needed to go that far if Johnny didn't have it in his head that he was better than everyone else. And because of that, he refused to apply for any blue collar positions. So he was out of work for a long time. He burned through what little money he'd saved up and had to eventually sell his house and move into a tiny apartment while he continued to look for a decent job. That alone was a massive hit to his ego, but it didn't seem to be enough to change him. Maybe when Johnny hits rock bottom, he'll realize his mistakes? Maybe.